you can eliminate racism from your hearts. So now Islam has a system. The only religion on the face of the earth which prohibits the touching of alcohol, not one sip, not one thought, is Islam. There's no other religion on earth which says don't touch that abominable stuff, is Islam. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? If all the people of South Africa, Indians, African, coloreds and whites, if they stop drinking, no more, no more bottle stores, no more, uh, no more wineries and no more breweries in the country, would it be a better country or not? So I reason with you and said, no, it will be a better country, but you know, how can we, our industries depend upon this and that and that. I said, no, it's your vested interest. You people who are, who are running the country, you have all your shares in the uh, Stellenbosch winery and this Lion Brewery. So in other words, you want to perpetuate that exploitation of the nation. Uh, but uh, I said, if you think like the Muslim, no Muslim owns a bottle store. Did you know that? It's a easy money. What Such about the choice of the people who are buying no. alcohol to buy? If you say as a Muslim, I can't sell bottle, I can't sell alcohol. Because now as a Muslim, you come to buy a bottle of champagne or vodka. Now I have to tell you, <laughs> says, you know, madam, this is very dangerous. You know, this is not a good thing. Do you think I will be able to do business? Selling, selling my, all my wines and all that. So I tell you, every customer that comes along, I says, you know, madam, you know what this thing does. You read the book of Genesis, chapter 19. Lot, what he did with his daughters, night after night. He's, he, he, he committed incest with his daughters because he was drunk. Do you know that? So it's a very bad thing. You know, Noah, he drank too much and he was lying naked, made a fool of himself. A man who walked before God, who walked with God. That guy is behaving like, like, oh, oh, oh. So I said, no, it's not a good thing. And we hear about cases, you know, rape and incest and all, alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Say so it is an evil, an abomination. And the only religion which condemns it in the strongest of terms is Islam. And Islam has created the biggest society of teetotals in the world. We are almost a billion Muslims in the world, and almost as a people as a whole, we don't touch that stuff. Don't you think we should share this with the rest of mankind? Uh, what are we trying to do? We are not forcing you that if you went to the bottle store, we don't say go and bomb the bottle stores or kill the people who go and buy alcohol. No, no. But we want to talk to you. Say, it is not a good thing, my child. And if you can agree with me, we have one more, one more to think like me. And one day, we say, inshallah, God willing, the whole of mankind will be able to establish the kingdom of God on earth, as Jesus Christ prayed for. That kingdom of God means you lead your life according to God's will and plan. Whatever he wants you to do, you do. That is the kingdom of God we want to establish here on this earth. But not with the gun, not with the grenade. With sweet language. If it can be done, we're trying to do. You, you've said before, and your center said before, that Islam has, is the only answer to South Africa's problems. What solutions do you have? What practical solutions does Islam offer? And, and what, what would that mean? What would those solutions mean to other religions already existing here? No, no, you see, this is the vulnerable thing. Once you accept, for example, the, our biggest problem in South Africa have been for the past 300 years, and now is racism. Racism. Everybody talks about the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Everybody. The Jew will say, there's one our Father in heaven, God Almighty, and we are all his children. The Christian says the same thing. Father in heaven, and we are his children. The Muslim will say, ditto. <laughs> Father in heaven, and we are his children. We must live in, in peace and harmony as real brothers and sisters. So everybody talks that. But how do you implement that? The system was for 300 years that you kept all the races separate. You had the Dutch Reformed Church. For the whites, separate. For the colored, separate. For the African, separate. For the Indian, separate. In the Roman Catholic Church, they didn't have that type of different churches. But here's the cathedral here, and I used to live here in this road called Cathedral Road. And every year, there was a Corpus Christi procession passing. My door. Every once a year, Corpus Christi, body of Christ. They used to march, go to the Albert Park and offer praise and all that, and they used to come back. Invariably, every year I'm watching the white, men, women, and children in the front. Next comes the colored, men, women, and children. Then comes the Indian, men, women, and children. Then comes the African, men, women, and children. Invariable, 
set up. Who told them that? That the African knew his place, and the colored knew his place, and the Indian knew his place. No, you programmed him that way, that this is where you belong. So though you talk about the father of the God and the brother of man, it wasn't there. In the house of Islam, if you ever visit the Muslim at prayer, and it's worth visiting, it's worth recording for your audiences. You watch that everybody stands shoulder to shoulder. The hall is packed. But you find nobody says, look, I stand near the window. It's a hot day. No, no, no. The system. Fill the rows, fill the rows. Side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Do the women stand shoulder to shoulder with the men? No. There is what is called a segregation of the sexes. Men and women are not allowed to freely intermingle. So in the absence of a separate facility, they pray at home. But in this mosque there, there is a separate facility, upstairs. They are in the mosque and yet out of the mosque. What Islam forbids is this free intermingling. Free intermingling. But women to women, you're a Bantu woman, you're a Muslim lady, you're white. And a Bantu woman is standing next to you, a Chinese woman is standing next to you. And you offer your prayers. No gaps left between one devotee and another. Same thing to the men. So five times a day, the people are made to come together. They're using the same taps for ablution. They're using the same towels for wiping their faces. And it doesn't occur in the minds of these people that an African had just used that tap or the African has just wiped his face. It doesn't occur to him. The man who's calling the people of prayer is almost invariably in every mosque in South Africa an African. What for? He has a tone, his bass voice compared to the Indian shrill voice. You know, we are shouting the same words, but our voice sounds sharp and shrill. That guy is so mellow. So we said, no, no, we like that, his voice. So almost every mosque in the center of the town is African and African and African. He is the guy behind the imam to call the people, come on, come on, <laughs> fill the rows. So in other words now, it doesn't occur to us that the guy is an African. Because that's our training, you know. Oh, it's, it's, he is like Bilal. Bilal was the companion of the Prophet. He was an Abyssinian, a Negro from Abyssinia. He was a freed slave. Uh, and he occupied such a high position in the house of Islam. He's like one of your 12 disciples of Jesus. Bilal was one of the 12, like, around Muhammad. So, uh, an Abyssinian Negro. So, to us, it's, it's, it's a programming. Five times a day, we meet. Need. And we end our prayer with the formula by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So, peace and blessings of God to everybody to the right of me. And Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And peace and blessings of God to everybody to the left of me. When I did that, I found a white man there. When I did this, I found an African here. Next time, I found a Chinese here. I found a. Yes, five times a day, he's my brother. He's my brother. There's a system. Not just talking, there's a system which then once in a lifetime the guy goes on a pilgrimage. There he finds Muslims he can't imagine. Chinese Muslims. You know? Chinese Muslims. Muslims from Ethiopia, black as black. Right? Muslims from Turkey with blonde hair and blue eyes like you. No. So the brotherhood says, no, This is my brother, this is my brother. Right? We get together. So it is a system. Then the only religion which says, Don't touch alcohol. The only religion says no gambling. 